Hi, and welcome to today's Biznology Digital Marketing Webinar. I'm Mike Moran, founder of Biznology and a senior strategist at Conversion, Reveal Context, and Solo Segment. I'm the co-author of Search Engine Marketing, Inc. and Outside In Marketing, and sole author of Do It Wrong Quickly. I'm a veteran of IBM, managing groups in IBM.com for eight years and retiring from IBM in 2008 as a distinguished engineer. Today, you'll be hearing from Heather Lloyd Martin, who will present Speed Up Your Sales with Scientifically Proven Writing Tips. But before we start, we need to recognize our sponsors, Barn Razors, a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Corp, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. Solo Segment, your one-stop shop for targeted B2B content marketing techniques, including website search and website personalization. SuccessWorks, SuccessWorks SEO content consulting and training services help companies drive qualified traffic, boost search positions, and increase conversion rates. As we wait for a few more attendees to join, let me review the format of our webinar. Our Biznology webinars last just 30 minutes, so you can easily fit them into your busy schedule. We record each webinar and we'll email you that link later this week. During our speaker's presentation, you can use GoToWebinar to ask a question. That orange arrow opens and closes your controls. If you have a question, simply type it into the box labeled questions at any time during the event and press the send button. I'll select a few questions at the end of our webinar and pose them to Heather. In the handout section of your control panel, you can find a PDF of today's presentation. Today, we'll be using the Twitter hashtag poundbiznowebinar in case you'd like to share information during the webinar. While we're waiting for the last few attendees to join, I'd like to remind you that the Biznology monthly newsletter and daily articles are available for free at biznology.com. So if you're not already a subscriber, we hope that you'll sign up now. Thanks again to all of you for spending 30 minutes with us. We know how valuable your time is, so let's introduce today's speaker. An 18-year search marketing veteran, Heather Lloyd Martin is considered one of the top SEO content development experts in the world. She trains individuals and companies in the latest content development and consults directly with clients. So if you've ever struggled with writing sales copy, this is the webinar for you. Heather, take it away. Hey, everyone, and uh, thank you, Mike, for that really awesome introduction. Um, I have known Mike for, geez, I think out of that 18 years that he mentioned that I have been uh, in the industry, that I've known Mike for a good, like, 14 of that. And so it's always nice to be able to speak together and share a lot of these yummy educational tidbits with the audience because there's so much cool stuff going on in the industry right now, and it's fun to talk about it. So I'm known primarily as the SEO content writing chip, uh, where I have talked about that since the beginning of Google time, literally, of how to intelligently research key phrases and put them into content. But before, and actually during that time, but definitely before I started doing that, I was a direct response sales writer. And so I was one of those people who would write those letters that you would receive that were like two pages, double-spaced, and on, written on both sides, trying to get you to do something, buy something. And one of the reasons that I like talking about sales writing now is because that as Google has gotten smarter about words, and as we have gotten better about how to write online in a way that is good for engines, but more importantly, great for our readers, one of those things that have sort of gotten lost along the way is how to write sales pages, how to write pages that will help move folks along the sales funnel and eventually get them to convert. Granted, there's a lot of information about blogging out there, and that's great on how to blog, and it's, that's important. But I want to bring it back to the basics because for a lot of companies, this is where they need to spend a good chunk of their resources, right? It's great to hire a blogger or to have a person in-house that's a great blogger. But 
writing for sale, sales is a slightly different skill set. And so we'll talk about how you can do it yourself or if you are outsourcing, using some of this to figure out how to evaluate the person's writing and if it's something that is right for you. So let's talk about even why to use them. And there is a certain school of thought that says, oh, sales writing formulas are cheesy, and there's like 50 of them out there, and it doesn't really do any good. But really, these formulas have been tried and tested. Uh, following a formula can help the writing process be a little bit easier and go a little bit faster. So if you're the type of person that gets writer's block, especially if you're writing content for your own company or you've written a lot of content that day and so you're starting to burn out, a formula can help focus you. They've been tested so we know that they work. I mean, granted, you'll still want to test and play on your own site, but in general, these have been very reliable. So let's launch in and talk about a couple formulas and then get into how to write some headlines using the latest and greatest research. So this will be fun. I want to bring it back to the first rule of sales writing. It's what's in it for me. And uh, if you've listened or seen me talk about uh, sales writing before. This is my what's in it for me guy graphic. And this is probably the number one problem that I see with sales copy in today's world, and in general, right, is that uh, it's copy that explains the features, but it doesn't talk about the benefits, why someone would want to learn more, explore the product, contact you for more information. And although B to C sites typically are slightly better with, with uh, benefit-oriented sales writing. Um, business to business sites, for a lot of them, this is a huge opportunity because the sales writing sounds kind of dry. And certainly there is a way to make it very what's in it for me, even if your target audience is technical or your engineer or someone that doesn't want a lot of fluffy copy. So just know that this is where it starts. This is the foundation of everything you do is remembering how, how what you do, what you, what you offer, how you serve brings it back to how that helps that target customer. So this is one of the old sales writing favorites that you will pick up any sales writing book and this will probably be the first one featured, AIDA. There is a school of thought that says in today's world it's not as relevant anymore, uh, but we still see it used a lot online, and I'll show you some examples. So what does this mean? The first thing you do is you grab the reader's attention. It's usually with a really good headline that grabs their attention, gets them to realize that they're in the right place, and what they'll be reading is highly relevant. The next step is to not take their attention, that you've got that, you want to hold that interest and engage their mind. What's important for them to continue reading in order for them to continue to feel engaged? Then comes that desire and the action. You get them to want it, and then you can tell the reader how he or she can act now. So this is the class example that everyone thinks about when they think, they think of AIDA. Uh, written in 1925, we've all seen, they laughed as I sat down at the piano, but when I started to play. So let's talk about what today's version looks like. Here's a screenshot from WordStream. Uh, the guy who runs WordStream is a brilliant man named Larry Kim. And uh, even though he owns WordStream, he is a spectacular writer, especially a, a sort of a direct, has his sort of direct response knowledge that is fascinating when you read what he's, he's written. Uh, and if you look at this homepage, you can see how the AIDA elements are split out. So online advertising made easy. So that's a great way to grab people's attention. And then you see the different areas where it's helping to hold that interest, it's helping to keep that desire going, and then boom, it tells you how to, to take action, grade your account, try it free. So you can see how the elements very smoothly break down into a sales page that feels very integrated, but not at all salesy. 
And that's where people will sometimes get hung up on sales formulas is that they sound too salesy. And this definitely isn't. Another example is from Moz. Uh, and this is, um, I think, brand new because they just added a service, which you'll see in a second, of how they tie this in. So we have uh, products to power your online visibility. Online marketing is complicated. Moz software makes it easy. So we've got that attention and interest, boom, front and center. So when you load the page, this is what you see. And then we see this little will add for a service that um, is brand new for them. It says Keyword Explorer, exposing the keywords and metrics others try to hide. Talk about desire there. What are those keywords and metrics that people are hiding? I want to know. Well, you can start exploring now. So again, you see how it's very integrated. It doesn't seem salesy. And it is something that can, can definitely grab your interest and make you want to learn more. Now, in today's world, we also can add an E to the AIDA formula to represent engagement. Uh, so we'll see a lot of that in blogs. At the end of it, what do you think, question mark? And that's the way to, to get people to comment. Where we're also starting to see that a lot more is in newsletters, uh, where people are creating customized newsletters that are not just, here's the latest and greatest blog post, but Here's a brand new post that I wrote just for the newsletter. Hit reply to let me know what you thought. And that's the way that they're gauging engagement. PAS is another big old sales writing technique that is incredibly effective. Uh, that is, start off with pain, describing the problem. Twist the knife and you agitate that problem a little bit, focusing on the emotions. And then you provide the solution, the way out. So this was created by a man named Direct, or excuse me, Dan Kennedy. And Dan Kennedy is one of the most famous direct response copywriters out there. And he's got this really great quote talking about when you understand that people are more likely to act to avoid pain than to get gain, you can understand how powerful this first formula is. And that's true. Uh, we do a lot in terms of pain avoidance. Right now I'm trying to book a flight and I'm carefully watching the rates and watching for that little pop-up that says only X flights left at this price because when I know I see that, that's when I'll book. So I avoid the pain of having to pay more. So how does that work in terms of advertising? Here's the classic example that uh, I'm hoping many of you recognize. Uh, it is the I've fallen and I can't get up. Uh, some of our younger viewers might not recognize this particular ad, but it was very, very popular at one time, and it totally fit into that PAS example for this target audience, falling, not being able to get up, and not having any way of contacting someone was a very scary thing. I believe it was Life Alert uh, that had a little button that people could push to let them know they needed help. That was the solution and the way out. If you look to Ramit from I Will Teach You To Be Rich, uh, he's got an interesting URL, but he does a lot of spectacular writing. And this man is another example of someone who knows copywriting. So if we look at the structure of this page, are you getting paid what you deserve? If you're like many of my readers, the answer is no. You may, may even be getting underpaid by thousands of dollars a year. Ow. And then he twists the knife a little bit, and then talking about how some people are getting four and five figure raises, they might be socially awkward, but, and then today I invite you to sign up for the list. So you can see that he starts off with some pain, he agitates it, but he always provides that way out. So someone can realize, hey, this person understands my pain. <laughs> they know that I, what I'm going through and they can help. Here's another example that you can see from Dan Kennedy, who starts off by saying, if you're a business owner, you've been an advertising victim. But then he goes at the bottom of it, he talks about that solution. They're going to count those letters, the most important letter you've read. And if you were followed down on the sales page, and there wasn't a place that you could act now for more information. So again, you can see how everything ties together. So we've talked about the sales copy, but headlines are also hugely important. And one of the 
fun things about this webinar is that uh, some new research came out between the time of when we started, when we planned it, and today that I was able to integrate into the, to today's presentation. And this new research is from BuzzSumo. BuzzSumo is a spectacular treasure trove of information if you're a content marketer because you can see how people have shared certain types of headlines and get an idea of what's popular. And what they've done is they combed through all of this data to find out from a, a sharing standpoint, social standpoint, what works for headlines. And what they find works is, first off, successful headlines typically have three out of five content elements. An emotional element, a content element, what type of, of post or, or content is it, uh, the topic, format, and finally the promise. So you can look, let me just go back to this, you can look at some of these subtopics, for example, the how-to, the amusing how-to, surprising how-tos, and think, wait, some of that sounds sort of familiar. And here's an example that was in the, the research article. They talked about how, for example, here's all five of, of those content elements working, and who they used as a company who does it right, and we'll all laugh, but we know it's true, is BuzzSumo, is even though we might make fun of their headlines and how sensationalist they are, they work on us. <laughs> we might not want to admit it, but they work, and it's because BuzzSumo knows this and tests this. Now, I have down there an, an uh, asterisk, if you're writing for SEO, don't forget your key phrases. Now, if you're looking at a situation where your blog post headline and the title of the post are the same, which is in many cases the, where you're doing, uh, know that we now have a higher t character count for titles. Google just changed this. So you now have 70 char characters, including spaces, to play with for your title, which is about 10 to 15 characters more than we did before. So it allows you more room to write a really good title that can have these elements for, for social, but also good for search as well. Another thing that uh, the BuzzSumo study talked about is trigrams. So these are three word phrases that appear in the headlines, and we break it down into what's getting the most amount of clicks. So you can see it's different for Facebook and for, uh, for Twitter. Twitter, something like Donald Trump is, <laughs> tends to get a lot of shares. Or on the flip side, with Facebook, X things only, uh, that tends to get more shares than something on Twitter. So you can start playing with your headlines accordingly if one social network is more important than the other. And if you're focusing mostly on LinkedIn, as B2B marketers are, helpful is the name of the game. Uh, tips, habits, mistakes, those key phrases are really important in those LinkedIn headlines. And if you can throw the word successful in there, even better, because that's what people are looking for on LinkedIn. They're looking for easy tips that will help them be more successful at their jobs, with their careers. So it's definitely different than Facebook and Twitter, but at least we have some sort of, of measurement there of, of how we can create our headlines. So to sum everything up, remember everything is centering on the reader. Everything you write, everything you do. And help your reader answer the question, what's in it for me? If you are evaluating content from another writer that misses those points, there's a lot of features, not a lot of benefit. The benefits are really focused on the target reader, then it's time to rewrite. I know that the writing formulas will make your writing easier, so I encourage you to give it a try. The first time you try, it might not work because that formula might not be right for your audience. This is when it's fun to go in and play and test to see what does work. And finally, experiment with headlines. We have all heard that headlines is the most important thing to get right. Uh, this data gives us some really important information, how we can start targeting those headlines, especially if we know that one social network is giving us more leads than another. 
And now that we have more room to move in terms of our character count for our title, then it's easier to be able to put in say, three of those five content elements and maybe flip in a key phrase if we can to pull everything together to make it a really good integrated title that's great for readers, great for SEO, and great for social. Well, thank you very much. I look forward to your questions. If you'd like more tips about sales writing and SEO and the latest and greatest, uh, you can please sign up for my weekly newsletter. You can subscribe at seocopywriting.com, or you can always follow me on Twitter at, at Heather Lloyd. All right, I'm going to kick it back to Mike and answer your questions now. Thank you again. Great stuff, Heather. I'm sure our attendees have a much stronger idea of how to write persuasive sales content, but you didn't answer every question. I've got several good questions from our audience teed up for you. And I'd like to remind our audience that it's not too late to ask your own question by typing it into the questions box in your GoToWebinar controls. Before we get to the questions, I'd like to tell you about my website search online course sponsored by Solo Segment. How do you make sure your visitors can find the information they need? How do you keep your content relevant to searchers? You're probably not an IT person, but you don't need to be. Learn how to tame your website search problems. Go to courses.solosegment.com to try the first module for free. We're about to start firing questions at Heather, but we need to thank our sponsors once again. Barn Razors, a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Corp, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. Solo Segment, your one-stop shop for targeted B2B content marketing techniques, including website search and website personalization. SuccessWorks. SuccessWorks SEO, content consulting, and training services help companies drive qualified traffic, boost search positions, and increase conversion rates. Now on to your questions. Our first question, Heather, is, my company sells a very complex product. These examples all seem simple. Is there a formula to help us simplify our message? Uh, there could definitely be, and uh, of course it all depends on the, the company and the target audience and everything else, but certainly there are some instances where you can take a very, very complex message and then distill it down just to those benefits in a way that doesn't turn off the reader. It gives him or her the information that they need to read, but isn't so weighted down with information that it's hard to go through the site or the sales page and get the information that the, the reader needs to know. So one of the fun things with content and websites today is that you can have a lot of information on the site <laughs> where people are able to get that information, but on your sales pages you can keep them fairly pristine and make sure that you're just distilling it down to, to the, the product or the service's essence. And certainly I would recommend testing different approaches to see what works because it's amazing how you can find that just one little tweak in the voice of the page or the benefit statements or even the length of the page can increase conversions tenfold. So it's definitely something to play with and, and uh, to get a sense of how people are performing or are interacting with the page now and then play with it to see how you can improve that. Great. Um, next question. Um, Sales often influences marketing and the content that is developed, and sales usually speaks the lingo from the company standpoint rather than the brand personas that the content is meant for. What's the best way to influence both sales and marketing to write content geared towards the audience and not about the company's latest and greatest solutions or products? So if I'm understanding the question directly, is that is it that there are two different target audiences that you are trying to influence with the content and you're trying to figure out how to write content that will satisfy both audiences? I think what it's saying is um, that the, the sales and marketing team often have their own language that and they're trying and they're speaking from the company viewpoint and where you're uh -huh. advocating to speak from the audience viewpoint. And I think he's asking how to 
influence those sales and marketing teams to to do what uh, to do what you're suggesting? <laughs> that one is an excellent question. Uh, I have seen this happen so many times, especially with business to business companies, uh, because everyone seems to look siloed and thinks about the product and service in their particular way. One of the times that I see this come together and those silos walls start crashing down is around key phrase research. Because I've seen marketing hammer, we must talk about our product and service in X way, and sales are hammering the same way. This is how we, we need to discuss our products and services. But then when you start going into the actual data of how people are searching for it and look at the conversations that people are having about it, what they find is that everyone is having this conversation without them because they're using the right words and phrases that people are using to describe that, that product or service, not what the company is. So if there's that kind of disconnect, um, and I realize this is often easier said than done. Uh, uh, to break down those silos is often the first step is like, hey, let's, let's ignore this and focus on what kinds of, of things are our customers saying. Let's use their voice rather than to trying to push our voice upon them. And this can be sort of a slow moving kind of conversation, but it's amazing what happens when someone will type in a phrase like, and this is a true story which Mike has heard before, multilingual global communication systems, which nobody has ever searched upon, when what the company really offers and what people are really talking about and what they need is as simple as free instant translation chat. So check the key phrase research. This is where competition analysis can actually come in handy to see how other companies are talking about about the product or service and know that the breaking down of silos and changing that communication can be slow, but once that light bulb turns on and people realize that they're having the wrong conversation, it can change the process of the copy and change how things are done within the organization very, very quickly. Great advice, Heather. Um, I see a question here I can answer really quick. They wanted to know which website you were referring to, and it is BuzzSumo. It's B-U-Z-Z-S-U-M-O.com. Um, yes. Heather, here's the next question for you. Um, our SEO keyword phrases are about our products, not the pain. Do we need pain keywords too? And won't those pain keywords put us in competition with lots of other businesses we wouldn't normally compete with? It depends on, on how people are searching for your products and services and what's important to them, <laughs> which, I, which I know is the non-answer that, that nobody wants, right? Um, but if you know that people are searching for your products and services and you're looking at your analytics and saying your search data is coming from those kinds of key phrases, awesome. But if you do know of a pain point associated with your target audience, not everyone, but associated with your target audience, and you see that there is search volume for that term, e even if it's a very long tail type of term, uh, why not give it a try? It Hypothetically, you might be competing with everyone else, but on the flip side of that, a lot of companies I see don't really focus a whole lot on the right key phrases. They're just kind of winging it, right? So why not give it a try if you find something that's applicable? The worst thing that happens is you tr test a few pages to see what works and you find it doesn't work and you go back to what your original strategy was. But certainly within optimization and writing the content, sometimes broadening out your key phrase focus, especially with long tail, can be a very, very good thing. Terrific, Heather. We just have uh, just have a few seconds left. Do you have a couple of tools that you use to try and figure out how to either you know uh, um, do the right copywriting according to the formula or test copywriting? Uh, with the testing copywriting, you've got the a, a lot of people are using sort of the uh, optimizely as a lot of pe people use for that. Uh, for copywriting formulas, I don't know of any um, easy resource other than just choosing some formulas and, and trying to 
plug in the copy to see how that works. But as far as other tools, um, SEM Rush is great to get an idea of what other people are doing for competitive stuff, and again, BuzzSumo, as I mentioned earlier, for, for content. And uh, if nothing else, just check out their blog, because they've always got really good and interesting information. Well, that's all the time we have for to, here for today. Heather, thank you so much for these great ideas, and thanks especially to our audience for your participation and your questions. If any of you had questions that we did not have time to answer, you can email your questions to Madeline, M-A-D-E-L-I-N-E, -E, at MikeMoran.com, and she'll be sure to get them to Heather for the answer. Later this week, we'll send you all a link to the recording of this webinar to listen to again and to share with others. We also invite you to mark your calendars for our next BizKnowledge webinar, Why Email Marketing Still Matters and How to Make It Work for Your Business with Andrew Skolkind, scheduled for 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on June 14th. We hope to see all of you back here then. Bye, everybody.